Okay, so to wrap up the topic of patterns, I'd last but not least like to talk briefly about user interface patterns. Um, this is now a quite different thing, of course, but the fundamental idea is still the same, that you have a pattern that can be applied to all kinds of user interfaces. Of course, that means that now we don't deal with UML diagrams and code anymore, but now we rather talk about things like layout and which widgets to put into a, a pattern and so on. Um, the book references here from which I've taken a couple of these uh, of these examples, and I think they're interesting to see that patterns don't just have to be architecture or code, but can also apply to the actual look of, a, of an interface of a program. So. Uh, first of all, let's look at a very common pattern, actually, which is called two-panel selector. And the description already says more or less everything you need to know. So you have two panels in the interface, which are side by side, and which of one which contains a list of items, and the other contains the view of the currently selected item. And this can apply to um, to email, for example. This can apply to a preview in the uh, in the file browser. Um, there's all sorts of possible ways to to adapt this to one specific user interface, but they all have this. Uh, this fundamental feature in common, that one panel shows a list of items and the other panel shows a detailed view. Um, sometimes you can also have uh, this extended as a three panel selector where you first select, uh, uh, for example, a folder. This might, might be on the left here. First you select the folder, then you select the uh, individual uh, email and then you get the, that email shown here. But uh, the basic idea um, is just also possible with two panels and this is what this pattern is all about. Um, if you have not so much screen space, for example, on a mobile device, then there's also an alternative, which is called one window drill down. This is actually quite similar. So um, the example is really old, as you can see. This is one of the, the first iPods, but uh, this still applies to just about any mobile interface uh, as well. So when you select an item here, then in the next step, you will get a, a list of sub items for this one and so on and so on. And uh, when you arrive at the bottom level, then you will just see a list of items. Um, and so the you, you just have one window as opposed to the two panel selector or one panel and the contents of the, that are always selected uh, or replaced with whatever you selected previously. Of course, for this to work properly, you need uh, some sort of back button or uh, undo button to also step back in the hierarchy. Um, but again, this is uh, a pattern that you see almost uh, uh, certainly on any smartphone, for example, in any sort of smartphone interface. And sometimes you also see it for uh, things that you don't need so often. So uh, for example, when you have th something like the the settings panel in macOS or also in Ubuntu, then this actually is similar to the one window drill down where you can select uh, more and more um, specific options menus and have those displayed on your um, on your single window. So there's not a two panel selector here, but rather the one window drill down just because, not because the screen space is limited, but rather because um, the, the this is just something that you're not using quite as often. Then another very important um, UI pattern is very straightforward. It's called illustrated choices. And that um, just means that whenever you can show pictures inste instead of just words or even alongside them, then do so. So uh, if you just would have a list of, of image names, file names here, then that wouldn't really help a lot uh, to imagine how it actually looks like or if you just saw the name of the font in this example and not also uh, the name set in the font itself, then this would help a lot less to actually imagine how the end result might look like. So in any sort of graphical user interface, especially if it's, if it's related to designing things, um, it's always a good idea to do this sort of, of 
additional illustration to actually show people what they're dealing with instead of just plain text. Um, so yeah, this is a, a very fundamental pattern. Another one that's a little more specific again um, is called extras on demand, and this is sl slightly related to the the one render drill down. Um, However, here now you have a, uh, a interface that can be expanded. If you click on, uh, this is really old as you can see, but it's still, um, this pattern still comes up every time. So in, in current day Photoshop, you will see exactly the same thing basically. So you have a, a quick selection for very uh, often used colors. And then if you click on define custom colors, then you can add additional additional information and define your own colors in here. So um, if, you sh uh, if you showed the whole interface every time somebody opened this dialog, then people who are not familiar with this would probably be overwhelmed a little and would take their time to actually figure out what's, what's important and what's not. Um, on the other hand, if you start off with the simple part and then on demand, as the, the title says, on demand, expand this to also show the more complex aspects, then those people who actually need that and know where to click can expand it when they want. And those people who are happy with the, with the basic selection can stick to that and won't get confused by all the additional parameters that you, um, uh, that you might, might need at some point. All right. Um, another user interface pattern that's also quite common, that's extremely common actually, is called global navigation. And that means that you always have a consistent part of the user interface that's uh, helping you navigate through the, uh, through the entire system. And uh, here we have a really old example again. The, so the book is uh, something like 15 years old already, but still this pattern is also still used today. Um, so one example is that if you have an Android smartphone, then usually the lowest part of the screen will be uh, reserved for these three buttons with uh, back, home and, and windows basically, or applications. And this will at any point, wherever you are in the user interface, you can always rely on these three buttons to, to navigate through the system. So this is exactly the same pattern, actually. Even though it's um, 15 or 20 years later than the example here, the basic idea is still the same and will always remain the same. So you can always count on people liking that feature that they always have kind of a, uh, a known, a known baseline which an uh, which to access and with which they can find their way through the interface. All right, last but not least, uh, one other example for a user interface pattern, which actually doesn't really relate to any user interface element, is called few hues, many values. And this is kind of uh, just an aesthetic choice here. So the fundamental idea is that you should um, select something like two or at most three uh, hues for your user interface. And then if you want variation in color, then you should shade those, uh, those individual hues, but you shouldn't pick five fundamentally different hues to, um, to design your user interface or, or eight, because then it will really start to look yeah, garish and uh, will be quite hard on the eyes occasionally because the contrast will be simply too much. On the other hand, if you um, stick to few hues and then just shade them differently, but the, the basic color remains the same, then your interface will get a much cleaner look and it will also be um, be easier on the eyes. So that's the, the fundamental idea here that doesn't actually deal with any specific interface elements at all. It just relates to the color scheme. But again, it's a, a pattern that you can use time and again in so many different variations and therefore it's not at all different from the um, from the code patterns and the architecture patterns we've already looked at. All right, so much for patterns. Um, I hope you enjoyed that part. So next up we'll continue with uh, um,
requirements engineering and also a bit more details about testing and so on. Um, hope to see you soon.